sees the construction cranes downtown looming across the skyline like huge prehistoric birds. The development is driving out all the character and sometimes Kathleen imagines these cranes scooping up artists and plopping down tech employees in their place. She knows it's only a matter of time until she's ladled up to replaced by a 20-something making six figures for speaking computer code, the only foreign language that matters. What happens, she wonders, to a city, especially one like San Francisco, a place that has always been composed of immigrants and outcasts and transients and artists, a whole surrogate family of people who weren't wanted other places. What happens when it becomes as homogenous as a suburb? That question is sort of the thesis in the whole book. What happens when this place, San Francisco, embraces homogeneity to such an extreme that its character is gone? So what happens to literature when homogeneity seeps in? Hopefully, the fringes the indie presses, the places where people are still interested in being transgressive and subversive, holster that volatility. They say to themselves, I don't want to read a remix of a remix of a remix of a book I've read a hundred other times. You know, I like to call it that sort of literature beige against the machine. Things that we've already experienced and we don't even need to chew it. It's like baby food. Uh, hopefully the artists use that anger to create the most memorable works of art that we're capable of writing right now. So Josh's new book is All This Life, and we're really looking forward to it, Josh. Can't wait, Peter. Thanks for taking the time. For sure.